What does the Bible have to say about spiritual sight? You might be surprised. Many people are interested in spiritual sight, being able to see in the spirit. Spiritual eyesight is a way of perceiving reality with your spirit. It is more than seeing visions in the spirit. It is perceiving truth, being aware of truth in the spiritual realm. In Mark 8.17, it says, Jesus, being aware of it, he was aware that the disciples were talking in the boat, that they hadn't brought bread. Spiritual perception. He said to them, why do you reason? Because you have no bread. Would have been interesting being a disciple of Jesus because you couldn't go off and have a conversation on the side. He knew all about you, everything that you were talking about. Amen. Then he says, do you not yet perceive? Everyone say perceive. perceive. Nor understand. So there's a, the Christian perceives and understands by the grace of God. Spiritual sight in the Bible is more than your eyes seeing. It's a perception. Do you not perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Your heart still what? Hardened. Having eyes do not see. So spiritual sight is the product of the condition of the heart. Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes do not see, having ears do not hear, and do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said to him, 12. Spiritual sight is knowing the truth. Knowing the truth. When a person sins, they can cause their heart to go into darkness, <clears throat> causing them spiritual blindness because of the darkness, which can also mean that their eyes of their soul is open to the demonic realm because of sin. It is not what we call spiritual sight, but it is a curse to be able to see by your soul into the realm of darkness where demons attack you, where demons manifest. There was a lady who wrote in today. Um, she said that she came to an online meeting and she, as a Christian, thought that binding and rebuking and being attacked by demons was normal. And the prayer helper asked her, a prophetic question. We encourage people who are learning about the prophetic to ask questions. And, he, and the person said, were you in a relationship? And she said, I can't remember the date, 2004 or something, I was in a relationship and we went to a temple and there in this temple, not a Christian place, in this temple, we prayed. And then when she repented and the prayer helper cast out the demons, she said that the demonic realm was closed down. The seeing into the demonic realm was stopped. 
sin can lead you into soul sight. I don't say spirit sight because without Christ, your spirit is dead and unable to do anything, but your soul is seeing. Spiritual sight is a grace from God. It's not possible to perceive in the spirit without God's grace. Why? Because spiritual perception and sight begins when you are born again. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives you an understanding that he is the Savior. Your eyes have been opened to truth. See where I'm at? Visions are an extension, really, of being born again. They're a gift from God. But the emphasis, emphasis of Scripture is that spiritual perception is sight. When you know Jesus, you believe in him, you believe the promises of God, you have become spiritually aware. Why? Because his word is light. Jesus is the light of the world. You can only see in the light. If, you, if you're in a room and it is, there's no light, no windows, you can't see anything, you might as well be blind. People without Christ are blind. You with me? When you believe in Jesus Christ, when you know the light, when you're looking at the word of God, which is Christ, which is light, you're no longer blind. Your mind has been enlightened by his light. Your heart has been enlightened by his light. Now you see. Once you were blind, but now you see. Hallelujah. Spiritual sight is a reflection of the condition of the heart. Is your heart still hard? They couldn't see the disciples. They're worried about not having enough bread when they'd just been in a miracle where God supplied bread for over 5,000 people, but their heart was hardened by unbelief. Even though each disciple got a, got a basket of leftovers, yet they didn't have a revelation. Spiritual sight is a manifestation of faith. The world doesn't believe, and so it's blind. But we who believe, we see. Hallelujah. You are blessed to see and hear. It is a blessing when God opens your heart to perceive reality. And this is my hope, that through these meetings... YouTube, other means, that God's grace will come upon people, that they will see the truth, that Jesus Christ is alive and well. He's still doing miracles. He's still healing the sick. We had that walking frame still on the, the platform when we arrived the man had walked home without it. He's still doing these things. We want people's eyes to be opened by the light of Christ, by the revelation that the Holy Spirit gives of the gospel. Amen? Without Christ, there is no revelation. There is no light. You're in darkness. You're in blindness. So the prophet of Isaiah Jesus said, hearing you will hear and not understand. Seeing you will see 
and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. People in the time of Jesus were seeing the miracles, many blind receiving sight, many lame walking, but their hearts were dull. They couldn't see him, even though they were seeing and hearing in the natural, but their spiritual eyes were closed because their hearts were dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. All glory. When the Holy Spirit comes and gives us revelation of the truth, Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Master. He is here in the power of His Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your eyes are opened by revelation. If your spiritual sight is healthy, your whole life will be blessed. If your spiritual sight is good, your whole life will be blessed. The lamp, Jesus said in Matthew 6.22, the lamp of the body, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you believe the gospel, if you believe the word of God and its promises, you will be full of light, full of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You will be blessed if you're full of light. But, Jesus said, if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? That's a cursed life to be without light. So it is our faith that is our eye. Let me say it again. Your eye is faith. To look at Jesus and say, Lord, I believe. I believe that you are my saviour. I believe that you are my healer. I believe that you are my deliverer. I believe that you are my provider. Faith opens the eyes to see truth. You know, it is God who will open your eyes to see the truth of the promises. It's God who will open your eyes to see the truth of the promise. And he has many ways of doing it. With Perry, 0% kidney function, the Lord opened his eyes and showed him that he would heal him. See, the Lord speaks, we believe, our eyes are open to truth. The doctors would probably tell him that you're crazy. No one comes off dialysis. See? But his eyes were open to truth. Genesis 13, 14. The Lord said to Abram after Lot had separated from him. So Lot looked at the land and thought, this is good land. I'm going this way. I'll have the best of the land. And then the Lord speaks to Abram and says, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Now, Abram didn't have television or radio or LED screens or, you know. He'd probably many times looked at the land. But there's a way of looking that comes from God. And so he looked northward, southward, eastward and westward for all the land for which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. He looked at the land from the perspective of God and believed that this land was his inheritance generationally, generation to generation, 
thousands of years of his generations, this forever was his land. Wow. You see, God has these wonderful promises. And when, when he opens your eyes to these treasures, you realize this is mine. It's mine. Your eyes are opened. It's mine. I can have healing. I can have deliverance. Praise God. And the Bible says, And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. And today, in the land of Israel, that land was covenanted to God's people. Back in the days of Abraham, God said, I will give you this land perpetually. It shall be given to him. And the enemy, Satan, has been seeking to steal that land ever since, over the 2,000 years. But forever it will be, it will belong to the Jews. Sight. Hagar and Ishmael have been cast out. Hagar was the the maid servant of, of Sarah, and there was a problem in the family with Ishmael, so she was cast out. They're in the wilderness, dying of thirst. And what happens? And God heard the voice of the lad, he was crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of a lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes. You see that? And she saw a well of water. The solution in Jesus is right there. But unless God opens your eyes, you won't see it. Sometimes there are people this, and they come to a miracle meeting and the solution is right there, but they can't see it unless God opens your eyes. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. Praise God. So God, was promised, by, God promised Abraham a son. Isaac. And then one day God told Abraham, take Isaac up to the mountain and sacrifice your only son, your beloved son. So Abraham went up on the mountain and he took the knife and he was about to kill his son. And then the angel of the Lord spoke to Abraham and in Genesis twenty two thirteen, then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Now, you'd think that if there was a, a ram, full adult with horns, caught in a thicket of thorns or whatever, and, you know, that Abraham would have been aware of it. You'd think so. But he only became aware of it when God opened his eyes. The answer, the solution is right here. May God open your eyes to see Jesus. He's the answer to all our needs, all the challenges, all the problems in life. May your spirit perceive his reality by faith. Hallelujah. True sight is the knowledge of divine truth. Ephesians 1, verse 15. After I'd heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. What is he praying? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of 
of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. What will happen when you receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of wisdom and revelation? When your eyes are open to see the truth of God's word, what will happen? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That means being full of light. Your mind, your understanding becomes full of God, full of light. Your eyes see truth and believe it. That you may know what is. See, when this happens, when he gives you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, you understand by faith the word of God. What happens? You may know what is the hope of his calling. You can begin to understand spiritual realities pertaining to your life. What is the hope of your calling? He has called you as a saint. What is your hope? Heaven is coming. What are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints? You can begin to understand the treasures of his glory that he has for you. And what is the exceeding, everyone say exceeding. What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? Wow, you put your faith in Jesus Christ and it draws the exceeding greatness of his power. See, your mind begins to open. You begin to understand. Your spiritual eyes are open that all you need to do is put your faith in Jesus Christ and to obey his word. Praise the Lord. And then he goes on and on praying, you know, that all these glorious things you'll become aware of. Praise God. So spiritual darkness and sin is the cause of spiritual blindness. You know, a Christian will be going through a tough time and so they think, I'll just go and do this. I really want to know about my future so I'll go to someone and have my palm read or something. And then darkness enters the person and they can't see. They can't see the word. They can't feel his presence. They're blinded spiritually by their sin. 1 John 2.9 He who says he is in the light, like I'm a Christian, and hates his brother, is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him, because someone who's in the light can see where they're going. But if you are in resentment, unforgiveness, if there's sin in your life, adultery, fornication, pornography, if there's darkness, if you're doing ancestral worship, whatever it is, if there's darkness in your life, you will stumble because you can't see where you're going. And you look at, you know, precious people in darkness and they're stumbling throughout life. One problem after another, one disaster after another, one problem after another because there's spiritual darkness that's causing them that they cannot see. You cannot see because you are not seeing light. Spiritual darkness. He who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness, does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 1 John chapter 2, there it is in the Bible. That if you repent of sin and you walk in forgiveness and love towards other people, your spiritual eyes will be opened by the light of Christ and you will not stumble in this life. Hallelujah. But if you hold resentment, if you choose to hold on to your sin, you will stumble in darkness. You think you can see, but do you really see? You know, there are lots of people that, that you know, I don't know, they're 
you know, they're prophesying all sorts of stuff and they're talking to people about all, you know, saying it's the Holy Spirit. But do they really see? True sight is a relationship with Jesus Christ. True sight is a walk of holiness. True sight is light. Jesus Christ has come that we might have sight. And there was a blind man, John chapter 9, and uh, Jesus healed him. And they cast him out of the temple. Verse 35, when he had found him. Think about that. When Jesus had found him, he went looking for him. Did you know that Jesus is looking for you? Praise God. He hasn't changed. The Holy Spirit still locates people. When he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into the world that those who do not see may see. When this man said, Lord, I believe, Jesus said, Those who do not see may see. This man who is in sin and darkness and also physically couldn't see, blind, he now can see physically and by faith, Believing that Jesus is the Son of God, now his spiritual eyes are opened. Hallelujah. And that those who see may be made blind. What's that about? Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. If you were blind, you would have no sin. You see, spiritual sight is righteousness. It's more than having visions. It's righteousness, a relationship with Jesus by faith in obedience to his word. If you were blind, you would have no if you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. Those who are self-righteous are spiritually blind. Hallelujah. So blindness comes a condition of the heart, dullness of heart, heart of heart, I refuse to believe and so on. It comes from ignorance as well. Ephesians 4.17 This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. In the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Spiritual ignorance leads to blindness. If you want to walk in the light, read your Bible. Don't be ignorant. Amen. And be careful who you listen to, who teaches you. Beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the scribes. Praise God. So... One of the causes of blindness is blind guides. That's what Jesus called them, blind guides. These are sp- people who, whose spiritual eyesight is blind, but they are guiding others in their religion. In Matthew twenty-three fifteen, "'Woe to you blind guides!' who say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind. 
For which is greater the gold of a temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, you say it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obliged to perform it. Jesus called them fools and blind. Who is guiding you in your life? I was talking to someone. Their daughter was having problems. They sent them to a secular counsellor. And I, I said to them, that's a dangerous thing to do. Send your teenage girl to a secular counsellor. How do you, what do you know that that counsellor's saying to your daughter? Maybe the counsellor's saying that you need to change sex. <laughs> I'm serious. And it's happening. Are you relying on someone who is blind to give you counsel, to give your children counsel? Who's leading your life? Be careful, lest you be guided by blind guides. Hello? You think, well, someone has a qualification, so I'm going to listen to them. And Jesus sent us a helper a counsellor, the Holy Spirit, who will teach us and guide us so that you have no need that any man will teach you, it says. The Holy Spirit, read the word of God, put your faith in him, be careful who you let guide your life, your finances, your career, your health decisions, your life, belongs to Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Are you short-sighted? <laughs> Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, are you short-sighted? <laughs> short-sightedness, spiritual short-sightedness, can't see far, comes from lack of character, according to the Bible. Someone who lacks character, it's all about how they feel, what's happening to them. You know, it's all short-sighted. 2 Peter 1.5 For this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control. Say to your neighbour, self self-control. Self Say to your neighbour, do you have it? To self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, given even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. So there you have it. The Christian who lives a fleshly life, anger, wrath, outbursts of wrath, causing schisms in the church, heresies, who's sexually permissive, all this type of stuff, is short-sighted if not blind. So spiritual sight is about the heart. Know Jesus Christ, believe in him, yield to his righteous word and to the Holy Spirit. If you do these things, then you'll be able to help other people. Matthew 7.3 why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but do not consider the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So if you want to be able to see clearly into other people's lives, you must first deal 
with your spiritual sight. You must first deal with the condition of your heart, with your character. If you are into pornography, how will you be able to see to help someone in pornography? If you are justifying your sin of pornography or whatever it is, how will you be able to see the sin in someone else's life if you have not dealt with your own spiritual blindness? Amen? If there is deception in your own life, how can you reveal the truth to another? If there's unforgiveness in your own life, how will you be able to help someone who's in hatred and unforgiveness with the love of God if you are withholding your love from someone else? Ministry to other people is not a profession. It's not something that you, that's out there and you do it. Out of your belly, out of your heart, shall flow rivers of living water. Amen? It's not something out there like a professional thing you're doing. It is a life in Jesus, knowing him, yielding to him, yielding to the word of God, surrendering to him. And then you'll be able to see clearly. You know, I want to encourage you, people around you, they may be of different religions, they might be just secular, living this life of this world and shopping, materialism, money and so on. But you who know Jesus see things differently. Is that right? You see di things differently. You talk differently. You act differently. People don't understand you because you are in the light and they're stumbling in darkness. Sadly, many of them don't know that they are blind. But thank you, Jesus, for the light of the gospel. Hallelujah. That opens eyes to see the truth. Praise God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. If there's an area of darkness in your life, ask Jesus Christ to remove the darkness. Come to the light and be free. Come to the light of his word. Be free. Come, come right now. Whatever sin in your life that's causing spiritual blackness, darkness, blindness, bring it now to the Father. Ask his forgiveness. Online, I'm talking to you. If you suffer rejection, hurt, resentment, let it go. It is a form of blindness in your eyes. Let it go. If you're watching on YouTube, you have pornography in your life. You're living out of wedlock, out of marriage with someone. You're blind. Come now to Jesus and repent. And your eyes will be opened to see the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we love you. We turn from our sin. We turn to Christ. We pray, Lord, set us free. Deliver us, Lord. Lord, give us the grace to see the truth of your word. Yes, Lord, give us the grace to see the truth of your word. Let our lives, our temple, be filled with the light of Christ. Lord Jesus, we yield ourselves to you. We believe in you as our Lord and Saviour. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.